Welcome back. How's everybody doing? Sorry for a little bit of delay today, guys. Uh, we're just having a slew of technical difficulties with both the, the, the studio spot. The internet's been going crazy at my house. We've had Xfinity trucks parked out there. I'm not sure what's going on, but it's good to see you. Welcome back to the Funk 530 Live show where the facts don't matter and you get extra points if you say CIA and propaganda all in the same sentence. Hit the like button for me, please and thank you. We got a lot to talk about today. We're going to cover some high level topics to start the night off. We're going to talk a little bit about corruption, uh, corruption in Ukraine, but we're also going to talk about a quote unquote mass grave and what that looks like right now. It's been found in Izum. We're going to talk a little bit about what it looks more like rather than a mass grave. We're going to obviously look at footage, but before we get to all that, i got to mention tonight's sponsor. Thank you very much to ATN Optics. If we were in the studio, I'd be able to point at my Excite 4K that's sitting on my Remington 700 back there. I absolutely love it. It's amazing. If you've never had a di digital optic before and you're looking for that next thing to take your hunting game up to the next level, check out ATN. Welcome back. I like being over here because I can do cool stuff like this. That didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> None of my stuff works today. Don't worry. It'll, it'll work here in a second. If you wouldn't mind uh, dropping a like button for me, it's easy. It's free. It's uh, the very fast way to support the, the team over here. I'm one small part of it. My name is Ronnie. I haven't said this in a long time. I feel like I need to continue hitting it. I am not Funker. I do work for him, though. Uh, but I am one small part of a bigger team that's looking at a lot of different conflicts. We're going to talk a little bit about Azerbaijan and Armenia today, too. So please, tap on the like button for us. No thanks, maybe later. All right, is it going to work now? I don't remember where the button is. There it is. All right, let's get started for the night. Let's get started. Hold on. Let's hit that button to turn that off. And then let's kill the music here. That didn't work. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's talk. All right, I'm going to pull up a uh, campaign map here. We're going to talk a little bit about a little bit about Izum. Okay. Just give me a second to get that pulled up. Here we go. Coming up now. So, Izum in uh I guess that would be Kharkiv Oblast. And for some reason, Edge is running super slow today. Let me right about in here. A mass grave. What's been what's been labeled as a mass grave in Ukraine has been found in Izum, and a lot of people are drawing correlations to the mass grave that was found in Izum to the Bucha massacre. If you're not familiar with the Bucha massacre, Bucha, you know, further to the west in Ukraine, was a place where Russians tortured and killed, you know, uh, somewhere around 419 civilians uh, that were found littering the streets of Bucha on their way out. Now, here's the, uh, here's what I have found to be the case in this, quote, mass grave in Izum. It's a little bit more like a mass cemetery. This is a picture that is uh, a comp that is making its way around the internet. It's, it was used tonight for tonight's thumbnail. But you're probably looking at something a little bit closer to a cemetery. Now, what we don't know is a where all this, how all of these bodies made their way there. Obviously, they have deceased and they have passed, and that, that's how you know they're in the ground now. But let me show you a new, another picture. Give me a second here. Coming up for you guys. That's the one I want right there. Here. The majority of these 440 approximately, I've seen reports from 440 all the way up to 500. The majority of these, you know, deceased persons, these bodies, are uh, in marked and labeled graves buried separately. Now, uh, according to Ukraine, what they intend to do is exhume each and every one of these bodies for a forensic examination uh, because it does consist of Russian, Ukrainian, Russian and Ukrainian soldiers, as well as civilians. So what Ukraine is trying to effectively do here by exhuming these bodies and conducting forensic examination on them is essentially continue to build the war crimes case. The war crimes case is already already has its deck stacked. Whether 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 you like it or not, it does. Uh, Bucha chopping chopping people's you know nether areas off. Uh, Russia has conducted myriad war crimes thus far in the invasion of Ukraine. 
I want to stop for a second and, and check in on some of the support that's already rolling in, and thank you guys very much for it. Uh, no knock, no knock a knee. That's kind of funny. Thanks for the 29 months. Goodness gracious. Uh, no more freedom of speech. Thank you for the seven months. Jack Death, thank you for the seven months. Aaron Horvitz, thank you for the seven months. Uh, Saxy Sea Turtle, thank you for the seven months. Thank you guys very much for that. Before we move on tonight, so so that's what I wanted to cover. There's a lot more information that's going to come out about this quote unquote mass grave, uh, and it's something that I'll be that I'll be following pretty closely. We followed the Butcher Massacre pretty closely, um, you know, with Funker you know here in the Funker 530 team. This is another one that we'll be following as well. Let me check in on the chat now. Full close. That's the one I want. Thank the dinner pro. You are live. All right, we're about to start the timeouts already, guys. <laughs> Good evening. How are we? Howdy from Maine. Welcome in. Documents are probably a thousand miles long by now. Their uh, myriad is is kind of an understatement of war crimes thus far. Yeah. Hi from Scotland. Welcome in from Scotland. Mm. Hard to tell if it's real or false flags or NATO can move in. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. There's a there's a lot of there's a lot of misinformation, right, uh, and a lot of amplification of information to take advantage of pre-existing bias. So let's talk about that. We were going to talk about corruption, and we're about to do some do some statistics today. Now I've got a full video that's going to come out that's going to describe all of this. I finished writing it today. Uh, I'm going to film it tomorrow, and I'm going to get it over to the editor. I might even edit, edit this one myself. You know, the editor's a new, newer member of our team. He's got a couple edited episodes in his plate on his plate right now, some work for our partners. So in order to get this video out there, I, I, I might end up editing it myself. We released a video um, yesterday that was breaking down some context around footage of Russians recovering their wounded using a rope conducting triage and then moving uh, their wounded off to, you know, presumably a, a casualty collection point for then an eventual move on further, um, you know, maybe to a hospital or something. And one of the, one of the immediate things that I noticed is that, that I tried to be very balanced with the commentary on that. I'm not always able to, I'm, I'm a human being. One of the things I immediately noticed in inside of a minute, we were, the comments were very, 50 50. And one of the comments that that rolled in was something about you understand that Ukraine is the third most corrupt country in the world. So I said, okay, I have researched this narrative before. We're going to we're going to play a little bit of where does this narrative come from game. All right. And we're going to look at some corruption rates across the across the globe today to start things off. Back in 2012, an organization by the name of Ernst and Young did a report across 43, 43 countries of attempting to identify the highest corruption perceptions via interviews with 1,758 company executives. Again, corruption perceptions. Are we? Am I going to tell you today that Ukraine is corrupt? Am I going to tell you today that they're not corrupt? No. Am I going to tell you today that Russia is corrupt? No. Am I going to tell you today that they're not corrupt? No. That's because corruption is a scale. Corruption is a scale, not a one or a zero. Okay. First and foremost, I'm sure you guys have all seen that third most corrupt country in the world narrative before, right? Especially since Russia's invasion. That is being latched onto and continue, continues to be perpetuated as a statement of current fact. That's 2012 data from that Ernst & Young report that I, you can't find now. I'm going to give you guys a link for the best place that I could find to find that report. That's the best source that I have. That's the best source that I have. I could not find that report. But what I could find is I said, okay, let's find additional sources. Let's go out and let's find an organization that focuses specifically on corruption perceptions. Because corruption is a perception. Corruption is not a yes or no. Is the United States corrupt? Yes. At what level? I can tell you we're nowhere near, you know, the top 10 cleanest countries in the world. That, that's for certain. 
But I can also tell you that based on those other sources, that Ukraine is nowhere in the top 30 most corrupt. So let's take a look. 2012, there's an organization out there called Transparency International. Every year, they publish a report called the Corruption Perceptions Index. Let's take a look at 2012's report, which was published in 2013. Coming up for you guys now. Here you go. So this is the Corruption Perception Index for... Oh, excuse me. This is 2013 data. Okay. Let's find Ukraine on this list. Now, the way this works is they have 177 countries. Let's take this source and let's examine the Ernst & Young source from a few moments ago. The Ernst & Young source interviewed 1,743, 1,758 executives. We're talking C-level executives on their perceptions of of corruption in doing business in the private sector. Transparency International focuses very specifically on the public sector, right? And they also evaluate 177 countries. So we have a larger sample size here. Let's find Ukraine. Ukraine is currently sitting in 144th place out of 175 countries. Is that great? No. Is it in the top three? No, it's not. Now, Transparency, Transparency International uses a numbering scale, 100, 0 to 100, 0 being the least corrupt, 100 being, or excuse me, 0 being the most corrupt, 100 being the least corrupt. Denmark, New Zealand, and Finland are the least corrupt countries according to the scale which Transparency International uses. Ukraine. I want to say that's position 33. You guys can math that. Nowhere near the top three. But this is 2012 data, right? What about now? Now, in the video that I'm gonna that I'm gonna have that's coming out uh, within the next week or so, I'm gonna dive into each year and tell you the position that Ukraine holds. And the purpose behind that is to help you understand that these narratives, these uh, pre-existing biases are being taken advantage of. I started the stream today by saying where the facts don't matter, right? They don't. What's happening is from both directions, whether it be the ghost of Kiev, Kiev, whatever you want to call it, whether it be the ghost of Kiev, or whether it be the third most corrupt country in the world, pre-existing by your pre-existing bias is being taken advantage of. And it happens very regularly. That, that is ultimately what information warfare is. So let's look at 2022 data, or 2021. 2022 is not released yet. And I lied to you. We actually have to go back to 2020 data. So the reason we have to go back to 2020 data is if we want to better understand, for Transparency International specifically, if we want to better understand where Ukraine falls on the global spectrum out of 180 now countries, I'll get there in just a second. So first... Look at 2019's data. So 2019, coming up for you guys right now. Denmark, New, New Zealand, and Finland, still at the top of the list here. One hundred and twenty-sixth out of one hundred and eightieth. Is that the top three? Where was Russia on the list? Let's check it out. 137th. There is no year since 2012 that Russia was less corrupt according to this scale, according to this scale, than Ukraine, right? But th that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is the very simple narrative that Ukraine is the third most corrupt country in the world. I'm not saying Ukraine isn't corrupt. I'm absolutely not. Not even close am I saying that. What I am telling you is they are not the third most corrupt country in the world. And even, even if they were, it's based on the subjective criteria of one organization, Ernst & Young, from 2012. That was a 2012 report. So this is 2019 data. Now, I didn't, I didn't save the link for 2020 data. So what I'll do is I'll monitor the chat for questions for a minute while I pull up the 2020 data. 
And then in 2021, they stopped doing global rankings and started focusing solely on their scoring system, which is zero to 100. 100 being the cleanest, zero being the most corrupt. Every country is corrupt. Exactly, Thomas. Every country is corrupt because corruption is a scale, not a one or a zero, not a yes or a no. It's not black and white. It's not red and blue. Let's head to Transparency International and grab the 2020 data, but I'll be checking in on the chat here. Where can I find this list, Ronnie? I'll be, I'll be linking you guys to their website here in just a second. Matter of fact, I'll do that right now. You guys can check any year for this right there. That's where you can check any year. So let's grab 2021's data. Corruption Perception Index 2021. Copy. Pasta. Now you'll note, in 2021, they removed the total standing, right? So we have a rank here. They removed the rank in 2021 and went solely with score. If we look at Ukraine's score in 2019, I want to say they had a 32. I could have waited for this video to come out, but this is something that I wanted to talk about actually yesterday, but I had internet problems and for some reason... The internet didn't want me to stream yesterday. So they had a score of 30 in 2019. This is 2019 Corruption Perceptions Index. And again, this single source, single source. And that's important. But what we hope to look at is public sector corruption, right? Not private sector. I don't want to see private sector corruption. That's Ernst & Young. That's, that, that was Ernst & Young's data source. I want to see public sector. So this is 2019 data. They had a score of 30. Higher is worse. Now they have a score of 32. So they've gained two points. That's worse. But where do they fall in 2019 versus 2012? Let's take a look at that because that's a telling story. So 2019, again, they were 126th. It's, easy, it's easiest for us while we still have a rank here. 2019, they were 126th. Now let's go back to 2013. And I, I believe I have 2013 data. They were 144th. Something that I've mentioned before is that while historically Ukraine has a challenge and an issue with corruption, that Ukraine has worked adamantly and overtly to rid itself of that corruption. To me, what we just looked at from 2013 to 2019 and 2021, or in 2020, excuse me, is statistical proof of that based on a corruption perceptions index. It's corruption perceptions. Corruption is a perception. It's a scale, not a one or a zero. Close to number three. Not really. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's kind of subjective. Close could be, you know, 50 off of number three. And in fact, if I'm not mistaken, as of 2019, they are 50, it, you know, they're in the top 50, I guess, out of 195 countries in the world, and more specifically out of 177, according to, you know, how many were evaluated by Transparency International. Now, there's some other really interesting things that come out of this, you know, um, and what I made very specific, I, I had a very specific intent. I would not use today's sources. I wanted to use pre-February 2022 invasion sources. Zero equals bad, 100 equals good. Correct, Matthew. So again, there's going to be a, a longer breakdown video. It's also going to explain my background a little bit. That'll help you understand why this is, you know, there, there's a reason that I'm looking into stuff like this, taking advantage of pre-existing bias right? Providing you the means for uh, confirmation bias, right? If for those that aren't familiar with confirmation bias, if you believe something and then Google 
that very thing, your echo chamber will essentially confirm that for you. And yet in that echo chamber is set by companies like Google, companies like Facebook, those profiles that you have set for yourself on social media. Shoot your AT4. <laughs> it's already been fired once, man. I can't reload it. Top 25%. See? Oh, great. You're absolutely right. Top, top 25%. Right? That in and of itself is a narrative. So if it's no longer top three, now, because of this stream, Ukraine is in the top 25% of corrupt countries in the world. That itself is confirmation bias or could be used as confirmation bias. Reloaded anyway. I thought about shoving some Roman candles down the front of it and recording a video with it, like a full, very serious review. I don't know. So I wanted to cover that. Again, I've got a full video. I actually am reading from, you know, my big long right up here. You know, I'll show you guys a, a portion of this. I got a big long right up on this. Uh, but this is the kind of stuff that now that I'm full time that I intend to dive further and further down into. Right. Let's jump into some of the footage. I'm going to bring things back up here. We're going to turn the music back on. Uh, Carl, thanks for becoming a member. How are you, dude? Welcome. Uh, Greg, thank you for becoming a member. Christian, thank you for the 1153. Thank goodness for free media. Thank you, Flunker, for reporting the truth. Uh, we're just reporting what we see, boss. All right, killing music. The very first... So our footage tonight is going to be very heavily Ukraine and Russian. Something I haven't talked about yet is our schedule. So if you're not tracking, I am still United States Army. And I'm going on my annual training over the course of the next two weeks. Two weeks. It's actually going to be a foreign weapons course. I'm going to get to shoot everything from the Dishka to the RP, RPG-7. AKMs, for some reason, a Browning High Power is on there. Uh, but it's essentially a foreign, foreign weapons course, and I'm really excited about it. So this is going to be our very last stream here until I get back the 1st of October. Okay. Now, what I hope to do is uh, have a bunch of videos that get released. I also am going to record a few videos while I'm there. We're going to be in a hotel room. Don't judge me for it. But this will be our last stream until I get back from that. So I, I failed to mention that earlier tonight and wanted to make sure that I covered that. Let's check our very first one that we've got here. This We're going to see a lot of helmet cam footage to get the night started. And our very first video takes place about 30 kilometers outside Lysychansk in Severodonetsk. We have a little bit of catching up to do. A little bit. Uh, largely because we missed the stream yesterday. Luckily, we're still live. And I haven't had any dropped frames or internet issues just yet. But, you know, knock on wood. Hopefully we won't. This video is coming up for you here in about four seconds. What a cool training if you have to go to one. Absolutely. I don't hate it at all. I get to stay in a hotel, wake up, shoot shoot a bunch of guns, go back to bed, and record videos. Well, I won't be recording those videos in my bed. Maybe. 20 bucks is 20 bucks. Full screen. Up to the bar. You boss! Got your message, Josh. Just respond to buddy. Where was the U.S. in that list, Ron? We'll talk about that right after this video, boss. Thanks for the 10 bucks, man. Put it 
Швидше! Другого, другого, крім! Швидко забрали відход! Бігав! Тварик забирай, Серега! So if you're looking for a little bit of context here, you're looking at Russian Sof uh, in vicinity of Kremenia, which is about 30 kilometers outside of Lysychansk and Severodonetsk in the far east of Ukraine. All right, let's bring it up. So let you know, I, that was something I did want to cover. Where's where's the U.S. fall on that list? And I'm going to use current data for that, right? So let me pull up my right up here and dive in. So for a frame of reference, Ukraine was in 2020 117th approximately out of 180. Now in 2021, the data that I have here from that is the United States had a score of 67 in 2021. Now let's see where they were in 2019. In 2019, the United States, United, I'll bring this up in just a second. Let me finish searching for it. Was 23rd. Ranked 23rd, here you go, out of 180 countries, right there. Sharing company with France, France. France is French for France, just in case you didn't know that. <laughs> I'll give you a second to, to, to look at this list. And the reason I wanted to bring up this one is, again, in 2021, they got rid of the ranking structure and go only by the score. 100, least corrupt, zero, most corrupt. We all know it's not Russian soft. Did I say Russian soft? Excuse me, guys. It was Ukrainian soft. My bad. Yeah, words matter. Words matter. I get it. I get it. Scroll down. Okay. I'll give you a link to this one. There you go. Nope. Wrong link. Here. Just take this link. There you go. Verbal typo. Yeah. Oops. All right. Let's jump into the next uh, bit of footage that we got. The dogs are barking. Attitude problem. Uh, the next video we've got is some more um, helmet camp footage. We got close combat. Uh, Ukrainians clearing out a Russian-held compound somewhere in um, in Donetsk. Coming up for you guys in five seconds. Can you tell us about the source? Transparency International. Every year. They do a corruption perceptions index, right? Now, what, what what you need to first do, and again, there's going to be a full video that's coming out that's going to describe that third most corrupt country in the world narrative. That's specifically what we're looking at with that content, all right? We're not necessarily, I'm not saying that Ukraine isn't corrupt, or they are. I'm not saying that Russia isn't corrupt, or it is, because every nation is corrupt. And the scores are reflective of that, because corruption is what? It's a scale, not a one or a zero. What we're specifically targeting is that third most corrupt country in the world, which is a really prevalent narrative that that has continued to propagate. And, you know, people are essentially using that in current arguments. That's 2012 data. And it's based off a sample size of only 43 countries. Okay. Now, Transparency International evaluates 168 plus over the course of 2012 to 2021 
that has increased up to to 180 now that they are evaluating corruption perceptions. Corruption is a perception. It is not a one or a zero. It's a perception. Let's take a look at this footage. I got uh, copyright music on the back end. Going to turn that down. How do you measure corruption? Dollars wasted per capita? You can't. That's the point. Is it's a perception. You know, who do you interview? Business executives? Public servants? Trying to spin it? I'm not spinning anything, dude. I'm presenting to you a, a a data source. You do with that data source what you you do with that data source what you like. We're gonna play a little bit of music. All right, bringing it back up. Uh, I want to check in on some of this support. Once again, guys, thank you guys so much for it. Uh, Spencer, thank you for the $5. Do you think Ukraine will reactivate its only nuclear silo, currently a museum, or build new silos to deter future aggression by Russia? Uh, no, uh, probably not. Right, so if you look at what happened with Zaporizhia, and, and I need to preface just about any question like that with... Uh, I am not. A, I am not a Ukraine expert, right? We we focus very intently on capturing footage, on documenting that footage. We have been following the Ukraine war at a at a very high level. I'm not an Eastern Bloc expert. I don't pretend to be. Um, so these are my thoughts. My thoughts alone. I don't see them doing that. Uh, we see them shutting down the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, uh, essentially restoring power, restoring power to that so that any damaged electrical lines and things that would keep that cold shutdown uh, from being a problem. Um, we see them doing that. I don't see them turning one, turning that back on to, you know, it, Russia's not going to care. That's that's quite obvious at this point. Does that make sense? Uh, that's, that's probably the best way that I can answer that. Uh, Joseph, thanks for the $10 again. Where was the U.S. in that list? I think I already uh, fielded that one. Uh, Greg and Carl, thank you for becoming members, guys. I appreciate that. I did want to make a note about members, guys. Here very soon, we're going to launch the ad-free version of our app. Uh, and when I say ad-free version, the quote-unquote, it's what everybody calls it, premium version of the app. What that is is an ad-free experience along with a whole host of other benefits that include you know, coupon codes from our partners. We don't maintain a whole bunch of coupon codes for our for our advertising partners. Again, partners are different than sponsorship. That's important to understand very important. Our partners, we believe in wholeheartedly. Sponsors are typically folks that, that come forward that have a great product that we like to present to you. But our partners, we have a relationship with these with these folks. So the ad-free version of the site is going to be coming to you guys really soon. We're in the final testing for that. There are a few bugs that we wanted to get through before we're done uh, with the launch of that. So if you do become members here, keep in mind, Google, Google big, big, big company is going to take about 30% of that. When the time comes, and I'll tell you when the time comes, please consider moving that support over to the over to the app. Please and thank you. Let's jump into our next piece of footage that we got here. Uh, the luckiest Ukrainian just about ever. We're about to see... Uh, I mean, I'm not even going to describe this one for you. you you'll, you'll be able to understand what's happening just based on the video. Uh, what's unclear 
and you'll understand this in just a moment, is whether or not the Ukrainian had shouldered this firearm or not. One way or another. Lottery ticket needs to get purchased. So what you're seeing here is a Ukrainian's weapon that has been struck by a Russian uh, bullet. I don't know if he was shouldering that weapon at the time or not. But regardless, you know, that's enough to make somebody poop your pants. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that much. Coming back. There's my button. Uh, we got some more helmet cam footage coming up here. Uh, U.S. or excuse me, a, a Ukrainian soft team overwhelming a Russian checkpoint. We will have a Russian section tonight. Uh, I've got some Russian perspective footage. Sorry. Coming up for you guys here in just a, just a few minutes. My chat's not up. There it is. Hi. Hey, guys. Good to see you. You look good. Uh, coming up for you guys now. Copyright music. smell good too yeah do you what do you smell like all right let's jump into the next one you know we used to before we had the new studio we used to deliver the the funker 530 live stream from my from my from my desk here and i'm so much more comfortable here like the the studio just i don't know it's it feels like too official it doesn't feel like i I'm able to connect with you. Uh, we might, we might take the live show and do it from here, from now on. What do you guys think about that? Shorts look good too. You like, you like the shorts? What do you think about those? Huh? What about that? What, the, what about them feet down there? What about that? <laughs> Let's bring it back. <laughs> before I get, before I get canceled. <laughs> uh, we've got a joint attack. Take some key terrain in her song coming up. Let's see the quads. You want to see it? today was leg day too, by the way. So leg day was front squats. I kept it relatively light. Went with two hundred uh, five by uh, five by five at two hundred, and then did some RDLs, and then I did some arm work today. A lot of times I'll stream my workouts on Twitch. That wall, you like that wall? Randomly do it from both. I, I like to set a standard, you know. The only reason we're not in the studio tonight is uh, I'm, I'll be I'm be straight up with you. I couldn't get my stream deck to work. I did a bunch of updates to to see if that was the issue that we had with Monday night's stream. After doing those updates, the stream deck wouldn't work, so I wouldn't be able to switch between all of our different uh, screens like this, right? So I I don't know I don't know I don't know what happened there. Video's coming up for you uh, uh, again. This so this is the terror battalion on their sixth and final assault on some. Some key terrain near her son. Coming up for you. You shave your legs, Ronnie? Nope. No, here's the way I look at that. That is a protective layer of fur for the elements. Okay? Copyright music on the back end. Gonna kill that. Definitely an upside of having two different setups. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Bro, you went to OBS 20? I did. Yep, it was dumb. It was dumb, boss. Show Achilles. <laughs> Thanks for the five, Carter. You have a bunch of peeps asking you to start an OnlyFans. Well, I had an OnlyFans at one time. It was just a picture of me with various ceiling fans oscillating fans and even the microwave fan and I didn't get any subs I'm 
I'm gonna turn on some music. Apparently in Russia, they're recruiting in prisons. Yep. The uh, head of Wagner delivered a speech not too long ago where he essentially described uh, the same speech as the previous not a step back policy. Can you do a desk pop, please? I've already had this. I've already had this week's desk pop. Um... So I don't think I, I don't think I'm due for a little while. <laughs> All right, killing the music. Uh, so wh what what I what I end up having to do right? Funker five three zero has been around for a long time, and you know when a larger channel ends up receiving some form of a copyright claim or a copyright strike, that's very impactful to us as a team, right? We are we are six six dudes total, and the YouTube channel is a part of what we do as a business. So when there is copywritten music on the backside, I have to protect us as a team by keeping that off of there. All right. I just want to, I just want to take a second to talk about that. Let's take a look at our next video. Uh, we've got some international Legion footage here. I, uh, it's an NSTR on location for this. I don't, I don't have a whole lot of location, but it's some really wild footage that we're going to watch. It's got a pop up for Twitch and I'm not sure why that's weird. Mouth pop. Coming up for you guys now. Copyright music. Thanks for the five. Good job, men. Hello from West Flanders, Belgium. Really like Fun Funker 530. Bless y'all. Thank you very much for that, man. And that IR laser blocked the site. Not as much as you might think. Maybe towards the very bottom.
Thanks for that $5, Spencer. I think I understand now. No beer for you? I already finished mine. Did you finish yours? Yeah, you're going to have to just... It's going to be a wild guess for you on what the 530 means. I'd love to I'd, lo I'd love to hear what you think, though. I think that'd be funny. 530 is what time you get up? <laughs> no, it ain't. I don't care. I don't, I don't care how much time I spend in the military. I, I don't get up early in the morning. I don't. I don't care. You know, um... I'm a night I'm a nighttime guy. I stay up until, you know, two, three in the morning. I don't do early mornings, man. Never ever. F that. Let's jump into our next one. So uh we're we're moving out of the hit the, the helmet cam footage here and we're moving into a few strikes into Russian held territory. So we're gonna look at a strike into Zaporizhia. And this is gonna be a Ukrainian strike, uh, reportedly high Mars. Can't confirm that for obvious reasons. You know, I'm not there. Uh, this is reportedly a high Mars targeting an ammunition dump in Zaporizhia. Civ Div is a nice channel. We love them. Yep. So every chance we get, we we embed Civ Div stuff uh, to push him a few more views on the website. Coming up for you now. Oh, how beautiful! Oh, our small eyes, Ох, как красиво. Let's watch that again. О, наши шмаляди. Красавчики. Ох, как красиво. While you're sleeping... While you're sleeping in, your enemies are waking up early. When they go to bed, I'm still awake. Good to hear the high Mars is still working. Yep, all 16 of them. All right, coming up. It's not Zach. Good try, though. All right, let's jump into the next one. Was uh, reading through the chat there. So this is technically Russian perspective footage. Uh, I don't know why I have it in the Ukraine section. But we're, what we're going to watch is a pair of SC-25s very narrowly, very narrowly avoiding uh, IGLA man pads. Man portable air defense system. So it's cockpit footage. Uh, and regardless of who releases cockpit footage, I like watching it. And I like to imagine... I think you can... I, th I think you know what song... But I'll let it come to your come to your brain rather than putting it in there. Here you go. Copy run. Epimist. That's what I'm saying, man. I went to the danger zone. Bow, 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 bow. Knock Spectre, thanks for the five, man. Embarrassing? Nah. Ronnie said cockpit. I sure did, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing. Let's jump out of that. All right, let's check out the next one that we've got here. So we've got some helmet cam footage that came out of Kharkiv. Uh, for those that live under a rock, uh, Ukraine has effectively taken back the majority of Kharkiv Oblast all the way up to the Oskil River. Uh, they're still kind of developing. So the the culmination of that counteroffensive in the north 
is starting to happen, wherein that new defensive posture on the Oskill River is kind of solidifying. But we've got some helmet footage, helmet cam footage um, that we weren't able to review a couple days ago since I didn't go live of Ukrainians engaging Russian infantry near Kharkiv. It's coming up for you. Give me about five seconds. Greetings from Finland. Welcome in. Coming up now. Copyright music. But that was a great guess, Raven. Funker, the origin of the Funker 530 platform, is Canadian infantry. That's a that's a unique one, though. I like that, Raven. Mary, thank you very much for the 999. I have no idea what 530 means, uh, but sounds good. Have no idea how I ended up on this channel, but super cool. Thanks for being here. We've actually been around for about so coming up on 15 years now. I'll, I'll give you the background. You know, I'm not Funker. Uh, I just work here. But uh, the channel was really started for Funker, the 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 owner of the Funker 530 company, to share his combat footage from his deployment to Afghanistan with his family. He uploaded it to YouTube so that he had something that he could send out. It turns out people really wanted to see what war looked like. So fast forward to today, and we're six total people deep, uh, each one of us veterans. Um, <laughs> Funker is the only non-USA guy that we've got. Uh, but we've got Josh, one of our writers. Josh is a, a Marine infantryman. We've got Will. Will is an Army infantryman. Uh, Osti. Osti is Army infantry as well. We've got Timo. Tim is in active duty law enforcement. And he also uh, was an Air Force veteran. You got me. I'm here. I work here. Let's jump into the next one. So we're, we're, we're switching into our Russia perspective footage here. So these are videos that we've that we've come across uh, that are either recorded by Russia or have a focus of Russia. The very first one is a Russian Su-25 doing what it probably should not do. I don't know. I don't know if this is something you want an aircraft to do. I'll leave it up to you guys, though. Typically, that's not what you want to happen. I'm not an expert, but you don't want that to happen. Now, Ukraine released or Ukraine reported that this footage was recent, but what we're looking at is there's not a whole lot of greenery right now. The the grass is, you know, very um, uh, uh, brown, if you will. It's probably relatively old footage that's just now surfacing. Forgot the man Cody. I did forget Cody. And that dude is an absolute wizard. Cody is a former U.S. Army Ranger, uh, part of the 75th Ranger Regiment. He's our video editing wizard, and um, he's absolutely fantastic at it. I absolutely forgot Cody, and I shouldn't have. He's the newest member of the team. He's, he gets the FNG treatment. You're out. See you later. That's what insurance is for. Turbulence from the engine. Don't forget the mods. We do have awesome mods as well. We do have an awesome mod team, both in the Discord and here, you know, doing their best to keep the chat civil. Uh, you guys have an uphill fight. Yeah. 
Yeah, please do keep the chat in English. I'm too stupid to know English. So imagine me trying to figure out another language. Let's jump into the next bit of footage that we've got. So we're going to see a Ukrainian... Uh, I can never pronounce this right. Buk, Buk, M1, anti-air system being destroyed by Russian artillery. And this is somewhere near Donetsk. Special crashing operation. <laughs> Here we go. ЗРК Бук, вооруженных формирований Украины. Огнем артиллерии зенитно-ракетный комплекс был успешно уничтожен. All right, there's a little bit of copyright music on the back end. We're going to turn that down. I do, Bankster. Yes, I do, Sprecken Z Dick. Mm -hmm. Book. All right, coming back up. Each time I have to, each time we do the stream from over here, I have to re-jog my memory with which buttons to push. I got a really big stream deck right here. There's a lot of buttons on it, and I, I never remember which one to push. All right, let's get to the next one here. Uh, technically, this is Russian perspective footage, um, but I, you know... We're going to watch a Russian tank try and send it and end up hitting two landmines here. That's more or less what we're going to see. Coming up now. Music. One more time. Sure did, Pierre. Whichever mod allowed that comment, you get a promotion. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> Spreck, Spreck and Z Richard. What's up, Ma? Yeah. Hi. All right. So there's a, there's a there's a munition out there, and I don't want you guys to mispronounce this. There's the 9K-111 Faygo. We're going to watch a 9K-111, Russian 9K-111 Faygo team. Doing their best. Okay. They did their best. All right. Good job. Here you go. Прямо идет. It's it's spelled uh, it's spelled F A G O T pronounced Fago if I understand correctly. Nine K one eleven. 
we actually did a video on the 9K111 Figo. Um, and hold on. I will give you the link. I can't believe I just typed that into the uh, search bar. There you go. If you end up searching the website for this, that's the one you're looking for. Here's the link. And let's let's move on. There is one other item I wanted to briefly cover. We have a we I have a I have an edited video that's being worked on. Cody is working on that right now. Uh Azerbaijan and Armenia. So for those that aren't familiar, 1988 to 1994. There was the first Nagorno-Karabakh War. Uh, it's essentially the fight over an area between Azerbaijan and Armenia that is ethnically Armenian, um, but they disagree over who actually you know, deserves to own that place. In 1994, Russia brokered a ceasefire, which then flared back up in 2020. Uh, Russia once again brokered a ceasefire, and it flared up again. Uh, as of September 13th, uh, Russia had reported that they broke their ceasefire, but because of the amount of projection that they have in Ukraine, they are entirely unable to enforce that at the moment. There is a lot of Armenian um, and Azerbaijan Azeri footage that we've got over the last, um, you know, since August. Uh, August is really when things kicked back off. I'm not going to show that stuff tonight, but I would suggest you guys head on over to the website and check that out because we are closing out the... Closing it things out for tonight. That's it for me. And just a reminder, this is our very last stream until at least the beginning of October. I've got a major project that's coming up that we expect to be filming in October. Uh, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about that, you're welcome to follow me over to my channel where we're going to kick back. We're going to play some Hell Let Loose, have a beer, maybe a sandwich. I haven't eaten dinner yet. But I'm, I'm so happy that you're here. Thanks for being here. Thanks for the good discussion. Uh, and thanks for supporting what we do here at Funker 530. We think it's very important that people see this combat footage, that they see the work that we're trying to do. We're not here to show you gore. We're here to, to show the world what war looks like, what use of force looks like, whether it be law enforcement use of force or uh, combat footage. We need people to better understand that. And hopefully one day they'll start to make better decisions around it. Good night. And we'll see you on the other stream.